Hello, this is Terry Brady with the Georgetown University Library. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can run DSpace 7 using Docker. All of the instructions that I'm going to follow are available on the DSpace wiki. There will also be links to a tutorial that you can follow along with on your own. So our first goal uh, here, I just want to demonstrate are that we have instructions for how to install Docker desktop on both a Windows uh, computer or a Mac OS computer. Um, so there are instructions for downloading um, Docker desktop uh, for Windows in this instance. Also in a Windows environment, we recommend that you install a particular terminal for issuing Docker commands from the command line. I already have uh, Docker installed. As you can see in my system tray, I have the Docker icon available. Um, Next, once you've completed the installation, we also need to download uh, from Git a set of um, Docker Compose files. These tell Docker how to run a particular instance of DSpace. I'm, now that I've got those files downloaded, I'm going to um, navigate to the directory where those files are located. In our next step, I'm uh, going to do a quick verification that we have the software that we need installed. We actually, by um, issuing that git command, we already have verified that we have git installed, but we'll do just a quick check here. I also want to verify that Docker is installed. Right, and you'll see quite a few details about my Docker installation have uh, appeared in the window, and now I'm going to verify that Docker Compose is installed. The, ne the next step will be to um, actually uh, launch DSpace 7 using Docker Compose, and there is a link here with some detailed step-by-step -step instructions that you can follow. I'm going to run an abbreviated version of that command. I'm going to take the following command, which will use Docker Compose to start up DSpace 7. In the process of starting up DSpace 7, it will also load uh, the entities dataset that the DSpace 7 team uh, built as a part of the DSpace 7 preview release. So when I issued this command, you'll see that four components started up. DSpace Solar, that's the search index for DSpace. DSpace DB, that's the Postgres database for DSpace. The DSpace um, container itself is the web server or Tomcat instance. And DSpace Angular is the new um, Angular uh, front end for DSpace. So now that I have um, started up the system, I'm going to run a command docker ps. And what docker ps will do is show me what's running on my machine within Docker. So you will see from uh, my the output of that command, I have uh, something called um, DSpace Angular running. That's the Angular front end. I have uh, DSpace 7 running. That's uh, our Tomcat web server. I have DSpace Postgres uh, running. That's our uh, database instance. And I have DSpace Solar running for our uh, search index. And then I have some other things uh, running from prior tests. So the next thing uh, that I want to do is actually, and all of this is running on my local machine and various um, ports have been mapped on my local machine to make uh, the Docker containers accessible. So the first thing I want to test is the um, DSpace REST API to make sure that's accessible on my machine. So now I'm going to run on my local machine port 8080, the server command. This is the um, interface that shows you all of the different um, endpoints that are available in the DSpace 7 REST API. So now that I've confirmed that that component is up and running, I want to next uh, check to see that the DSpace Angular user interface is running. This runs on port 3000. So here you'll see the DSpace um, front end appearing. We've got a welcome page. 
you'll see some content has loaded, um, including some um, interesting illustrations of the new uh, DSpace entities features uh, showing different uh, configurable entity types, such as um, volumes, um, issues, and journals. And I think this content is still uh, being indexed, so we do not yet um, have the ability to uh, browse to specific items. Having given the system a few more seconds to initialize, I am now able to browse to specific um, issues uh, within uh, publication. Um, I can also uh, navigate to different journal volumes and view specific items. So the last thing uh, that I will do is um, shut down my running instance of DSpace. So this uh, will we'll use pretty much the same command we used to start up the system, except in this instance we'll um, issue the down command. And you'll see it's uh, stopping those four components that we um, had initially started up. And uh, those components are, will now be removed. Um, so if we do our listing of running processes, um, when this uh, completes, you'll see that the 4D space uh, processes are no longer running. All right, so now taking a closer look at my um, list of running processes in Docker, there are no longer any DSpace tasks that are running. The last thing I want to illustrate uh, to you is if I run the Docker command docker volume ls, you'll uh, we'll see that there are a set of things called um, Docker volumes. These Docker volumes uh, allow you to save data from one run of uh, system to another. So this will allow you when you uh, restart um, the DSpace uh, Docker configuration, the content that you loaded previously will still be available. So in this listing, you'll see that there is an asset store for uh, DSpace Bitstreams, uh, Postgres data volume, and then a volume for each of our four uh, solar instances. So if this looks um, interesting to you, I want to point out that there is a tutorial you can follow. Uh, this was presented at Open Repositories. This will let you uh, go through step-by-step -step, um, various configurations, both running DSpace 6 and DSpace 7. Thank you.